This instructional video on DVTEL's Latitude Export feature will be covered in two parts. In the first part, we will determine if the exporter has been installed on the client workstation. The exporter is an option that may not have been installed with the original software installation. This part will guide you through the installation of this feature. In the second part of this video, we will cover the features and use of the exporter in detail. Getting started, we will need to determine if the export feature has been installed on the client's workstation. The easiest way to determine this is to access the Windows Start menu, View Programs, DVTEL Latitude 5.3, and view the client services currently installed on the workstation. We can see that the exporter has not currently been installed on this PC during the original installation. The next step, we will need to install the exporter via the DVTEL installation CD. From the Latitude installation CD, the install wizard will start and guide you through the installation. Following the prompts, we will click Next and we will be modifying the original installation of the Latitude 5.3 software. By clicking Next, it will ask us if we want to add or remove any features of the software. We will be looking at adding the exporter feature. By clicking on the red X, we can now add this feature to the local hard drive. By clicking Next, it will bring us to the next window where it will ask us if we would like to back up the configuration prior to us installing this additional feature. If you would like to back up your configuration, go ahead and click on the Backup Configuration 2 and choose the file where you'd like to back this up to. Clicking Next will let you know that any of the additional features or changes that you have made will be installed at this time and go ahead and click the install button. Once the installation has been complete, we will need to wait a few minutes for the services to restart and then we can launch the export feature. In part two of this training video, I will explain the features and use of the exporter. Let's take a moment to go over some background. The exporter is used when multiple video and or audio clips need to be exported. The exporter can accomplish this more efficiently. Please take note, when exporting data, it should not exceed 3.5 gigs or 10 concurrent clips, as this will put extra strain on the archiver. The exporter will export multiple clips to disk and or optionally burn them to a DVD or CD-ROM drive. Let's get started. Now that we have the exporter, installed, launching the exporter may be done two ways. If the client's workstation has Edmin Center installed, the exporter can be launched directly from this application. By simply double-clicking on Admin Center, logging in, navigate on the sidebar down to the Applications tab, and launch the exporter from this location. The second location that we can launch the exporter from is by simply accessing the Start menu under the Program files in DVTEL, Latitude 5.3, and finally the exporter. Please note, if this is the first time you are launching the exporter, you will need to provide a valid username password, and the IP address of the directory server. Once you have the appropriate information in the required fields, go ahead and click OK to launch the exporter. 
There are a few fields we need to enter in information prior to us being able to export our video. The first two we need to talk about are the max current sessions and the maximum file size. The maximum concurrent sessions are the maximum number of video streams that we will export at a given time and the maximum file size will be the max file size of the video clips that we are trying to export. Now just to make note that the more concurrent sessions and the higher the maximum file size are the longer it will take to export the video and could possibly take up to half the time it took to record that video. Also note that the maximum file size should not exceed 3.5 gigabytes in total and the max concurrent sessions also should remain at no more than 10. Once we have determined the maximum concurrent sessions and max file size, the next step we need to determine is when we need to look for our video. We'll need to enter in a starting date and time and an ending date and time. What we'll do is we'll come in and we'll determine as to what date that we're looking to start our video and the time in which we're actually looking to find our video and then when we're looking to finish our video clips and the time. The maximum results will be at 100 and can be changed from anywhere from 10 to 1000 noting that you cannot use any other numbers than that are listed in here. So if you know you're looking for less we can always go with about 50 results. Once you have that chosen and all your information is in here, the next thing we need to do is decide which cameras we're looking for the video clips from. By selecting the individual cameras, we'll be looking for clips between the time periods that we have selected above. Or by simply selecting the ISOC, which will give us video clips from all cameras associated here. If we did have attached audio that we needed to pull clips from as well, we could simply come down here and check the box to include the attached audio that might be associated with the cameras. Once we have all the information in these boxes correct, we can come down here and click Run the Query. When we run the query, you could see that we have a bunch of query results that pop up. Next, we can select the clips that we would like to export simply by putting a check mark next to the clips. Once we've selected the clips we want to export, we can come down here and click the Edit Checked button. It'll populate a window asking us from what time we would like to export and to the end time we would like to export, just showing us the times that we have chosen from above. We have a couple of options that we can change down here the first being the format that we will export these clips as. Default will be the DVTEL format. However, you can choose various other formats depending on how you'd like to use your video. Please note, if you choose any other format other than DVTEL, the video once exported will not be watermarked and cannot be validated for authenticity. Once you've finished choosing your format, the last thing we need to do is select a target drive or DVD drive for our clips to be exported to. As default, it will simply default to the D drive or the C drive. To select a specific location, click here and you can choose to make a new folder, naming it whatever you like. Selecting OK and OK once again will bring your export clips down to the lower section and they are now ready to be exported out. By selecting the export button, we'll begin the exporting process and the clips will be available for viewing once the export has completed. You can view the process of the exported video in the status area 
shown over here on the right hand side will give you an indication on how far along your export is in its process. Once your clips have been exported, a dialog box will pop up stating that the export process has been completed and by clicking OK, you'll just acknowledge that these files have been exported to the desired location that you selected earlier. We can go and view these files from our designated location and ensure that we have our clips available for use. Now let's take this one step further. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that you could export video clips directly to a DVD drive. So let's open back up our exporter and see what changes need to be made to accomplish this. From the export window, the first thing we need to do is delete the clips that we recently exported, simply by going next to each clip and clicking on the delete option. Once our export list has been cleared, the next step will be to select a video clip from our query results, just as we did in our previous export. Simply select the video clip, edit, change the date and time according to the clip that you'd like to export, and this time we'll need to look at our target drive letter. Originally we had exported to our hard drive. We will need to change this drive letter to reflect the drive letter associated with our DVD burner. Selecting OK and putting our clip down in our new export. Once you have all your clips selected, go ahead and choose the export option. First, the clips will be prepared and will automatically begin the burn process once they're ready. Once completed, this DVD can be viewed on any PC by simply inserting the DVD into the DVD drive. The DVD will automatically load and launch a standalone application called Sync Player. The clip you exported will be available for viewing by selecting the clip and clicking the Start button. Using Sync Player to view video will operate similar to Control Center. For more information on the features of Sync Player, please view the Sync Player instructional video.